In this video, we'll be breaking down everything you need to know about your new or soon to be new Tentacore product. If you're looking for specific information, use the timestamps in the video description below to skip ahead to a specific topic about the product. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Tentacore Arcs. So the Tentacore Arcs, this is our outside the waistband holster. It was actually the first holster that we introduced into the market. It went through a few years even before releasing to market going through a lot of different design iterations and a lot of thorough testing to make sure that it was the best thing that we could put out there for what it's designed to do. It's intended to be carried either just at your strong side hit point or even slightly behind the hit point. And it really works best for people who are looking to conceal carry, frankly, a gun not inside the waistband, but outside on their waistband. So this potentially would be a good holster for a general range use. It works great in with concealment under a light to even moderate heavy amount of clothes. It really excels pretty well under some sort of decent cover garment. And it's also sits incredibly close to the body and it's very comfortable to carry. So if you're at a point where maybe inside the waistband doesn't necessarily work for you, this would be a good option to start with carrying or if that's just your preference in general it the design itself is really well thought out and it's really intended to be used as an concealed carry holster for outside the waistband so in regards to fit and feel the arcs in our opinion and we make it is really well made most kydex or bolteron products this one is made of bolteron that are on the market tend to be made of a thinner kydex like a 0.08 inch thick Kydex. This is actually a two-piece design featuring two sheets of 0.093 inch. So you get a much more rigid, much more durable product out of it. It has, it won't collapse on you when you're trying to reholster. It's not going to compress to a point where you cannot put a gun in it when you need to. And it's just much, much more durable than a lot of other outside the waistband holsters out there on the market. This holster is really designed with concealment in mind, but a main feature as well is durability. We wanted this holster to be bomb proof. To ensure its durability is it's all riveted together. So there is no hardware on the wings that will fail. The only actual hardware that is adjustable on the holster is this screw right here, which is your retention adjustment. The actual integrated wings themselves are properly designed to hug this holster as tight as it possibly can to the body with leaving very minimal excess on the outside or anything extra protruding from your belt. So there's no plastic clips attached to this and then adding more bulk and more bulk and more bulk. It's just hugs nice and tight, feeds through the belt with fixed loops. The loops themselves will accommodate one and a half inch belts. Because of how these are machined, some sort of standard thickness belt or even slightly thinner is gonna work best with the arcs. If you have a really, really thick gun belt or like a really thick leather gun belt, you're gonna have a trouble feeding the belt actually through the holster itself. So one thing to keep in mind if you're looking to pick one up. Or if you have one and you're struggling putting it through a belt, you may need a different belt. All the edges on the holsters are nice and buffed, so there is no sharp points on the holster. There's nothing that's gonna cut you or dig into you while you're carrying. And that's even shown off here. Some holsters have a completely open muzzle. This is sort of a half closed, half open muzzle. So it being slightly open, it should fit your handguns that potentially have a threaded barrel on the end. It will not fit guns that have attached muzzle devices like a compensator or a suppressor, for example. And the reason why we did this is because we didn't want any sharp edges potentially digging into your hip when you're sitting down or potentially when you're standing. It creates a nice rounded down platform. The sight channel on it as well can accommodate most suppressor height sights. It also features sort of a middle height sweat guard. It also has blocking here to accommodate most aftermarket slide releases that are larger than stock ones. One of the other key features on the arcs, as well as really all of our holsters in general, is how an actual gun feels going in and out of the holster. So when we design our holsters, we want them more akin to a really high-end, like handmade horsehide leather holster, where it has that kind of full friction feel going in, 
and that full friction feel coming out. So the ARCS does a really, really good job of mimicking that feel. A lot of holsters boast kind of a snap in the inside, and that's generally indicative actually of a poorly designed CAD model or the mold that they're using for the holster. And generally what happens with a holster like that is you get a really snappy click into the actual holster itself, and then you have a gun that wiggles. Something like the ARCS doesn't do that at all. When you insert it, you feel that full friction fit of the holster, which aids in retention of the holster itself and the actual experience of drawing the holster. And because of that, you really get a holster that is very, very secure around the gun and then a very easy draw when you're actually pulling the gun out of the holster and even when you're reinserting it. It really locks up nice. It's something that you really do have to feel it to understand. It's kind of hard to show in video what the draw of a holster feels like, but it is definitely something that will be different if you are used to just kind of standard, more inexpensive Kydex or Bolteron holsters. So you just bought an ARCS, you opened up your Tenacore mailer. If all you bought is an ARCS, this is what will be on the inside of the package. So we have our ARCS bagged up here. It says what it is on the front, made in America. Take out our ARCS holster. The ARCS will also have what gun make and model it's for here. This one happens to be for a Glock 19 or like anything that's size equivalent. Now you'll notice this hot pink card. This is our no safe queens allowed card. So. I'll read it briefly. Tentacore holsters uniquely formed to closely match the contours of the gun. It will cause wear to the finish of your gun. If this is not acceptable, we're happy to provide a return shipping label and with our email on there. So you may look at this and be like, oh my gosh, this thing is going to completely ruin my gun. It's not. So holsters in general, if you're taking a gun and you're sliding it constantly on either leather or plastic, it's going to wear the finish off your gun. That's just the reality of carrying a gun and using a gun is... If you're training with it, if you're practicing with it, if you're carrying it, you're gonna get a very, very normal amount of wear and tear. Now, because of how the ARCS is designed with that full friction, nice feel to it, it may cause your finish of the gun to come off a little bit faster over time than a traditional holster will. So we include that just in case if somebody, if that's important to somebody. For us, it's generally not, um, I actually, personally think the more wear and tear you have on the gun, the cooler it looks. So you also get a Tenacore sticker on the inside. And then on the back of the actual insert, we have a little bit of, of things about the arcs, what it means. We have some uh, universal firearm handling rules on the back and some information about our lifetime guarantee and how to contact us. So let's talk about adjusting the retention on the holster. You'll locate this screw right here on the front side of the ARCS holster, and this is how you adjust your retention. Tools you'll need to do this is some sort of screwdriver. The actual screws here will fit a variety of different things. So like a Phillips head screwdriver, which is what I'll be using. You could also use a flathead screwdriver. You could also use a Robertson bit because it has a little square on the inside. And because of this long flat slot, you could actually also use like a cartridge case or something, basically anything that'll flip that, fit that slot. So we'll go ahead and grab our Glock 19 here and see what it feels like. From the factory, the holsters will be on the lighter end of retention. The reason why we do that is because the actual spacer on the inside is rubber. And if we crank and crank these down from the factory or just they're in a weird spot, they could form a set making it more difficult for that rubber spacer to decompress and compress. So it's a little lighter from the factory, although it still feels really good. Um, for my personal preference, I'll go ahead and tighten it just a little bit. So righty tighty, lefty loosey, of course, we'll take our Phillips head screw and it doesn't take much adjustment. It's very fine and that tightened it a little bit, which is perfect. And obviously if I wanted to go a little bit lighter, I could do so, just take my screwdriver and loosen it like so. And now we have a lighter fitting holster. Now you don't ever have to take this screw all the way out to apply any sort of thread patching or anything like that. From the factory, the screw already has a machine place thread patching on the inside. If you find yourself adjusting it a lot, 
potentially over time you could pop that scroll away out apply some more thread locker and put it back in but it's typically unnecessary now we're going to cover how to wear the arcs how to thread it through a belt things like that so ideally the arcs is designed to be worn either at the hip point and i'm actually touching my hip bone right here or just slightly behind so somewhere in this range right here you don't want to go too far back and you don't want to go too far forward if you go outside of that range it's not going to be very comfortable it's really it's not going to conceal well or anything like that so really take the time when you get your arcs to thread it through the belt and kind of test out where the ideal spot is for you for me generally on arcs about right there is a good spot so that's what we're going to do so we'll go ahead and set this down to the side for a second we're going to undo our belt uh, for this demonstration i'm using a tenacore zero underbelt also when you're doing this i'd recommend having your cover garment to go over for the purpose of video i'm not going to be doing that but you also want to test not only for comfort but you want to test for concealment as well so what we're going to do we'll look at our pants and i have two belt loops here and I'm just gonna take out the belt until it is outside of those two belt loops. Every pant is gonna be different, so keep that in mind. You may not have to do this, but ideally, this is what you'll do. So you'll go ahead and feed through the holster first, the first loop, just like that. You're not gonna go through the second yet. You're gonna take that tail of the belt and feed it through, and you're gonna feed the belt, line up how you want your buckle center here, take the rest of the tail, go through the other loop like so, and just feed that through. And then this is the opportunity where you want to slide, you know, more tail or less tail through, depending on how you want the belt buckle here centered. And then we'll go through our next loop here, and then we'll simply just tighten our belt. It's pretty straightforward how to do this. Once you're used to knowing how much tail you need to feed through initially, um, you're set up and ready to go. So for me, this is a perfect spot for the arcs. If I wanted to adjust it, I would just undo my belt and I could feed more or less tail through it depending on, you know, how the holster's riding on the body. If I want to take off the holster, all I'm going to do is just undo my belt like so, um, pull the belt through kind of in the reverse of how you put it on, it goes off just like that, and then you can just feed your belt back through as normal or whatever you're trying to do. So now we're going to take a look at belts, different thickness considerations, and what is optimal for the arcs and what typically doesn't work very well. So the arcs has fixed loops, and they will fit one and a half inch belts. And what I mean by that is this height here. So if this height of your belt is one and a half inches, it is what the arcs is designed to use. Something that is a little on the thinner side to like kind of a standard thickness is ideal. Um, you may have a belt that's super thick and will fit through the wings of the arcs, but a thicker belt doesn't lend itself well to actually forming with the wings of the arcs and sitting on your body. If you use a belt that's really, really thick, you'll end up getting this odd like W shape when you're actually wearing it on your person. And it's not ideal, it's not comfortable, and it, it doesn't really work well. And it's also very hard to feed through the loop. So what belts kind of works? So we'll give you a quick visual of that. So this is our zero belt. This is sort of a little bit thinner than what is traditional in the belt world. So as you can see here, this is a little thinner in this direction, which is important. So it's kind of has a normal layer of webbing on the inside and then sort of a thinner layer on the outside. If we feed that through the arcs, you can see it feeds pretty easily. Um, it does slide a little bit, but once it's actually on your person, it's not gonna slide around too much and this is gonna make it much easier to put on and it's gonna have much more room for adjustment without really cranking a belt through. So the zero belt or even our zero under belt, which is just a touch thicker than this one, works really, really well on the arcs. Now a more standard gun belt, this is a belt made by Wilderness Tactical. You can see it is thicker than our zero belt. So it uses two layers of actually that same webbing. So it's just a touch thicker, still flexible, which will give you the ability to let it kind of take its shape going through the wings. Um, you can see that this one has a chunk of Velcro at one portion of it, so it's a little thicker than even on the dual layers. But once you get it past that, um, it slides through just fine. And it'll 
slide a little bit if you pull on it, but not much. So that really secures the arcs pretty well. So something in this size range of thickness or a little bit smaller like the Zero Belt will work great. You can go a little bit thicker if you want. So another belt we have here is the, this is an Aries gear belt. This is one of their thinner ones, but it's very rigid and stiff. Um, so if we feed this through like so, you can see it'll feed through the loop just fine and it'll feed through like so. And this one, you can start to see, this one will still take shape pretty well, but you can kind of see that sort of W forming. So anything stiffer or thicker than this really is not gonna work well. And even when you're putting this actually on your belt with the thicker belts, you're actually going to want to put one loop through, feed your belt loop through, and then go through the next loop, which will make a little bit stiffer belts like this easier to put on. Just for the sake of demonstration purposes, I'll show a belt that is probably that is not ideal. So this is another Aries gear belt. Uh, great belt, but it's super stiff. And it's actually three layers of kind of traditional webbing. And it's very stiff. It will feed through the arcs loops, as we can see here. Like, that's not a problem. Um, although you may notice it's way tighter. And then when this is actually looped through on your belt, it doesn't really form as nicely and it adds a lot of extra stress on these wings as well. So this I would say would be a little bit thicker. You could make it work but it's not going to be ideal and it's not going to be as comfortable as something a little thinner. So when you're looking for belts or you already have a belt just that's one really important thing to keep in mind is you're going to want something that is a little bit thinner or just at kind of the average thickness for gun belts when you're either picking one for the arcs or if you're considering the arcs to go alongside with a belt you currently own. Thanks for watching. Check out our channel for some more videos. We have playlists on our YouTube page if you're looking for videos on our other products as well as training videos and much more. If you found this video helpful, leave a like and subscribe to our page to stay up to date on all things Tenacore.